there, this is Patrick Evans Hilton with Virginia Eats and Drinks. I'm also the culinary advisor for Norfolk Fest events, and we are aboard the beautiful American Rover in the downtown Norfolk waterfront. Look at this gorgeous scene behind us. The sun is starting to set, the skyline is coming alive, and it is more than cocktail time in my book. Of course, you know what they say, it's five o'clock someplace. And so we're talking about classic cocktails. And you know, this is a cocktail that wasn't around when our first settlers started coming um, to Norfolk back in the 1600s, but it certainly is a cocktail that was around during the Mad Men era. And we want to talk about all the breadth of drinks that everybody enjoyed here and certainly enjoys now too. These classic cocktails are drinks that have stood the test of time for a reason, and that's because they are really timeless, they are delicious, and they really speak to something deep within inside of us. So we've all enjoyed martinis, you know, from time to time, and I want to show you how to make a very delicious classic gin martini. Now you notice I say gin martini because I'm very old school in the fact that I believe that martinis should be made from gin, not vodka. Now if vodka is your thing, that's perfectly fine. And in Virginia, we have a lot of great places that do make vodka, such as my friend Carl Dorneman over at Reverend Spirits here in Norfolk. But as far as gin goes, I really love the, the, the people over at Vanguard that make casual spirits, uh, they make they make a very good vodka too, but they also make a delicious gin, and that's what we're using today to make our to make um, our martini. Now, martinis back when they really started having their heyday back in the 60s, they were a lot different than what we enjoy today. They had more more vermouth. Um, they had a different flavor profile. Sometimes they had a little bit of an orange bitter to them. We're going to make them a little bit more pleasing to today's palate too. And so really all you need, if you want to use vermouth, I would say do. I don't use very much, but I do like a little vermouth in mine. If you don't, then just a good classic gin is really uh, delicious there too. And so I do have a little bit of vermouth. I like to stir and not to shake, but you can, certainly can shake if you want to, if you have a good cocktail shaker. But I just have this pitcher that I like to use. I put a lot of ice in it because a martini is best when it is very, very cold. And so I'm gonna put some vermouth in it. And then I'm gonna be making some cocktails. There's several of us around here on board. So I'll be making some cocktails for several of us here. And so I'm gonna pour in some of our gin. And then, you know, there's a lot of tools to the bartending trade. And if you don't feel like going out and spending any extra money, I bet almost everybody, anybody that's Southern at least, has a iced tea spoon in your repertoire. And so it's perfectly fine to use that or any kind of long spoon, but do use metal because it conducts the ice a lot better, the cold a lot better. And I'm gonna put this in here and there's no magic number to the number of times you stir. You're just really looking to get that gin and that vermouth very, very cold. And I usually know I've stirred enough when I feel that I've had an aerobic workout and I've burned enough calories to justify having a martini. So you don't also need to go out and to get a special tool to strain your martini out of the glass. There are some strainers that you can use as a bar, but I'm just going to use something you probably have in your kitchen as well. And so this is just a nice little strainer and I'm going to put it right over my martini glass. It is very important to have a martini glass, I would say. And you can either garnish with a twist of lemon, or in this case, I have garlic stuffed olives. That's certainly going to keep the vampires away, if not the alcohol level in my bloodstream. So, cheers to you from aboard the American Rover, from our Festive Stay at Home series, all of our friends there trying to bring you some really great quality programming 
also trying to support local as much as we can. And for me at Virginia Eats and Drinks.